tonight to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, and verse 6. Seven and eight. When they therefore were come together, this is Jesus and the disciples, after the resurrection, they asked him, saying, Lord, <clears throat> will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, folks, please read again question they're asking. Lord, wilt thou at this time, I mean, you're going away. What's going on here? <laughs> Will you at this time restore the kingdom? The word again means something. To Israel. Obviously, they're saying Israel does not have the kingdom. Right. And he's saying that one time they did. Right. Will you restore the kingdom again? You're leaving us. What are you doing? Again to Israel? And he said unto them, which is Jesus, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Only the Father knows it. But he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, this is Jesus talk, talking here. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me, not us, not them, unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, meaning Canada. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Notice the question. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom again to Israel? Previous season. Now this is awesome. Amen. Let's stand there for a little bit here. Look at the question. These are the disciples. He's talking to Jesus. He's about to go on the Mount of Olives, going up to heaven. And they realize, Lord, you spent three and a half years talking to us about the kingdom. We're all excited. We believe that the time would come for you to do it. And they're going to leave us. And we know you're going to take off from us because you're not going to stay here. You're going to leave us right here. But what about Israel? Rome is in power. <laughs> Caesar's on the throne. We don't have a king. And we're not reigning, we are in subjugation to Roman Empire power. Lord, will thou restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now, what they're saying here is they're looking back in history, and they know the history of their forefathers. That Israel was a world power, a kingdom on earth. And when the question is being asked, obviously, Israel don't have a kingdom. And what restoration mean? I mean, it once was, 
it declined or died, and I'm asking you to revive it. But you did not. You did not revive it. So I'm trying to say to him, you didn't revive it. We know you're the Messiah, and we know when the Messiah comes, he's going to restore and revive the kingdom. What is going on? Now, they are asking the same question that Daniel chapter 9 is dealing with. Go down to chapter 9, please, if you would, please, in your Bible. And Daniel is asking God the same question. Before we go to chapter 9, I want you to look at something here. In chapter 7 of Daniel, Daniel's vision of four great monstrosities beasts. He saw them. Lion, bear, and goes on. In Daniel 7 and 13, Daniel is praying also to God for the kingdom of Israel. Now, you know what happened to the kingdom of Israel? The kingdom of Israel started with who? Saul, David, Solomon. They reigned. 40 years each. Worldwide. Powerful nation. Under them, Israel was a kingdom. Solomon son took over the kingdom, and because of the foolish response he made to the people, it divided the kingdom. And they became a split kingdom of two kingdoms. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom and then you know what happened, don't you? That the northern kingdom listened to the rebel, Jeroboam, and ended up in captivity in 721 B.C. Now, you're living in A.D., so it's a long time that happened. Now, the apostles know these history. They know it. And they're referring to, it to Jesus without giving the long story. But they said, Lord, is this the time or not? We know the northern tribe went into captivity around the world, never came back in 721 B.C. into Assyria, which is today called Syria. They captured them, and they banished them around the world, because they were a world power back then. And then, up to Nebuchadnezzar, and became a great world power, and overthrew Assyria. And when he did that, the southern tribe, the one that left for a while to exist, went into captivity in 606 B.C. That means for a while there's only one half of the kingdom reigning, over 100 years. If you subtract 606 from 721, it tells you how many years the other kingdom was in power before they also went into captivity. And, as you know, Daniel was in the second half. And Daniel went to Babylon, which is today called Iraq. And God told him, you're going to spend 70 years there. And then I will visit you. Now, you know what happened. Now, the apostles know this. And they know the history of the past. They know all about it. And they are looking at Jesus to solve it. And it didn't. <laughs> And their minds. On the endless journey, they were all disappointed with Jesus. They said, We thought he was going to. We thought it was going to be him. And, and the nation of Israel also got disappointed with him and says, He can't be the Messiah. Look what happened to him. He didn't restore the kingdom. They killed him. As far as we're concerned, he's dead. But Christ is alive, showed himself to them. Acts 1 says that. And they believe it's him. And they talk with him and they ate with him. Stuck with them for 40 days and 40 nights. But now he wants to go and leave them alone, and Rome is still in power and authority, and Israel is still in disarray, and supplication to a foreign dominance power. And they don't have dominance like they used to have. So they're asking the question with this in mind. But they also know that Daniel 7 says this I saw in the night vision, 
And behold, one like the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Came with the clouds of heaven mm -hmm. and came to the Asian of Days. Mm. Who is the Asian of Days? Jesus. Amazing. Mm. And they brought him near before him. Now, you scholars, you remember we talked about this before in Revelation chapter 1. Five. You remember that? They saw the Ancient of Days sat upon his throne, mm -hmm. and no one could open the seals. And they asked who could, mm -hmm. and no man was found worthy to do it. Yes. And out of the throne came one like the Son of Man, Amen. and said, I will do it. Amen. God, yeah. wearing two hats, right. hat of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And had of the what? Almighty God. The Bible is consistent in its teaching, the old and the new. Now, so here we're told in verse 14, back to Daniel 7, and there was given unto him, who the Son of Man, dominion, glory, and the kingdom of all people, nations, languages, to serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall be not be destroyed. Now Jesus had no such kingdom when he came. But he carried the title Son of Man. Now this is what the apostles are asking Jesus about. Since you're the Messiah, what about this? You, you don't have a kingdom. Rome took your life. When they come back to life, where's the kingdom? They're going to leave us. Now, folks, let me back and tell you this. This is the reason why Judas sold Jesus. <clears throat> Judas was a politician, and Jesus knew that. And he thought Christ was going to join his terrorist group and overthrow Rome. He found out Jesus was not going to do that, and so he settled for something less. So he sold Jesus, mm -hmm. and hoping Jesus would do what he always did, disappear mm -hmm. when they tried to arrest him. Right. But to his shock, Jesus <laughs> did not disappear, because mm -hmm. Jesus had to fulfill Isaiah 53, mm -hmm. the suffering man, the suffering lamb, and Christ fulfilled it but at the hand of Judas, the betrayer, who kissed them and sold them. Mm -hmm. So Judas don't realize what he's doing, and he's playing a role that was very deadly. Now, the apostles, come back to Scripture, is asking Jesus, if you're the Messiah, what's going on here? Why don't you fulfill all these scriptures? Where's Israel kingdom going to be? He said, none of your business. None of your business. Your business is to go wait until you receive the power, I promise you. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost and power from an eye. And then I want you to go in all the world, beginning at Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and propagate and touch the entire expanse of the world and tell them what you've seen. Oh. Oh, that's not in Daniel's writing. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of mission is this? He said, you stay right there until you've been doing power from an eye. Now, what Jesus is trying to tell the disciples is, he's trying to tell you, I'm, I've chosen you to fulfill Isaiah 28 and verse 10 and 11. Go there. Now, church, I'm trying to explain to you. And I hope you understand what I'm talking about here. Don't tell me it's too complex. It's very simple. If you know what I'm trying to say to you. They're asking about the kingdom. He said, it's not none of your business. But your business to fulfill what I want you to fulfill. Isaiah 28, and verse 10 to 11. He said, whom shall he teach doctrine? Whom will he teach knowledge? Right? Whom? Right? Then they're weaned from the milk of Judaism, our men's doctrine. And drawn from the 
grasp of traditionalism. All right? Next verse on. Read on. Keep scrolling down. They said precept must be upon precept, and so on. And then with stammering lips and another tongue, will I speak to this people. That's exactly what happened in Acts 2, 1 to 4. They had stammering lips and another tongue. Right? So obviously, Jesus Christ is talking about a kingdom that they're not talking about. He said, the king that I'm talking about is not one of observation, but one that's going to be in you. In other words, I'm going to reign in you. I'm not interested in bricks and mortar and stone and real estate. I want to reign over you. I am with you and shall be in you, and you'll know when I'm in you, because when you turn out in stammering lips, and another tongue, then you know I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. By the way, when this happens to you, my people, they said they're going to know that you have entered for the first time in the true sabbatical rest. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have just jumped from eternity into, I mean, from, from, from mortal time to eternity. In other words, I just give an experience that takes you out of this present to the future. I'm in you, and you're going to have a sign, stammering lips and another tongue. I'm going to teach you my doctrine and my precepts. And I want you to go into all the world and teach the world. And when you do that, you just help me build my kingdom. Not to Israel. Because Israel's kingdom is limited in location, geography, and ethnic nationality. But I want a kingdom that's in the uttermost parts of the world, throughout the world. So what happened here, go back to Jerusalem and experience Isaiah 28, verse 9 to 12. Experience that. And when you get that, my doctrine comes with it. I'm going to teach you doctrine. Now, the apostles didn't quite understand that. But they obeyed, and they went, and they waited. And tonight, I want to show you where this come into being. Because now, tonight, I'm going to finish that with you the 70th week of Daniel. Daniel understood by writings that 70 years was pronounced on the southern kingdom of Israel. That means two and a half tribes, and the ten, the nine and a half went somewhere else around the world, and then returned until the year 2000 AD. But the southern tribe returned in 536 BC. They went out in 606 BC and came back. Now, why did they come back? It's a partial return for the purpose of preparing two things. The city for the coming Messiah, which is Jesus, and there should be a temple for him to visit. Understand that? So they're, they're thrown out of their country into Iraq, the southern tribe, and they stay there for 70 years, and then the Messiah is supposed to come, but when he comes, he didn't come to an empty country, an empty land. He was come where his people are. So God brought them back from Iraq and put them back into Jerusalem to wait for him. There he came and saw them. I'm going to show it in a minute here. Here's what happened. <clears throat> now we're Gentiles. And I'll be going back and forth on my chart, so please. Pay attention, don't be discouraged at my go back and forth with my chart. Yeah. Forget about me, what went through my finger by my hand here. Okay. If you look at sorry. What I'm doing here, take it back to the beginning to understand what we're doing here. 
you know, we start out by looking at Daniel weeks, seven to weeks. Can you see this chart right here, folks? Or we can see that. We not more trees. See that? Do my drawing here. Much I can do for you. Seventy weeks. Daniel's praying. I would imagine this man praying in captivity. Oh God, have mercy on us, Lord. We've sinned. Please restore the kingdom. And the angels show up and said, Daniel, God heard you several weeks ago. I come to give you understanding what's what's going on. God said, I've heard your prayers. I will respond to your prayer. And I'll show you what's going to happen in the future. It says, to your people, the city, and your temple. You read that before in Daniel chapter 9. I don't want to go there. But verse 23 to 27, talk about it. What's going to happen? God told you. Now, and so, while he's praying, God gave him that vision. It says, 70 weeks are determined on the nation. In other words, God says, I need... 70 weeks to complete what you're asking for. The church is not seven days a week. Each week equals seven years. It's Bible. It's a symbolism. And it came from the idea where Jacob said to Laban, uh, I'll marry your daughter. He says, okay, you will? Well, fulfill her weeks. I'll give her to you. So he worked first seven years, and then he worked another seven years, which is 14 years. So he worked two uh, weeks together. So a week in that reference to Israel means seven years. You understand that? Yes. Okay. So... Jacob is called Israel. Israel means Jacob. Now, so God says 70 weeks are determined for your people. First, half of the 70 weeks is seven weeks. Right here. Book of Ezra. I ask you to read that. Ezra covered the entire period. Book of Ezra described what happened. The temple that Iraq had destroyed was rebuilt under Cyrus, the king of Iran, or the king of Persia. Rebuilt the temple. Then Nehemiah started praying, and God says, rebuild the city walls and the city. And then God said, now the temple is restored, the city is restored, let's bring the Messiah. So the Messiah showed up, born, grew up, did not operate until he was age 30. Because that's the age of entering your ministry. At age 30, Jesus and John the Baptist met face to face at Jordan. That means John the Baptist, who is a priest and a prophet, is representative of the Old Testament system, the Mosaic system, or it's called the Aaronic priesthood system. Jesus Christ, standing on the other side of Jordan, represents the New Testament system called the Melchizedek system. So the old is about to diminish and the new comes on. The Aaronic, Levitical priesthood is going to be abolished and Christ ushering a new covenant, a New Testament covenant, which is based on the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 7, it describes it very clearly. Amen. So Jesus is a high priest. Even on earth, he's a high priest. On earth, he's a king. On earth, he's a prophet. He's all three. Replacing Moses as the prophet, replacing David as the king, and replacing Aaron as high priest. So in this one man are three offices, but on earth he's operating as a prophet. When he goes back to heaven, he's operating as the high priest. 
When he comes back, he's coming back as the king. Did Israel understand that? Absolutely not. But they will later on. So, Jesus Christ was born like Daniel was told, and he died. And Daniel saw a temple down here being built again, and it got destroyed. And he said, I want more clarification on what's going on between this point here. And God says, not for you to know. No one person in the Bible has total, complete revelation. It's line upon line, precepts upon precepts, here a little, there a little, but never a complete. In other words, they die not knowing. They'll speak about it, but they'll know exactly what it means. It's not for them to know. It's not for their time. So God said, no worry about it. Give an example. The Lord said, what are you? Among the twelve will not see death till I come back. And the said, he said, John would not die. He didn't say that. And Peter asked, well, what will this guy do? Jesus said, none of your business. Mind your own business. <laughs> What's happened to him is my problem, not yours. So they were just as inquisitive as we are today. So they asked him, Lord, explain this, explain it. God said, all right, this is going to happen. The temple is going to be rebuilt on the Cyrus and build my temple free of charge, which he did. The Iranian king did that. All right? And then the, the, the walls were rebuilt. Then Christ came and Christ died and he revived. Now, Israel rejected the Messiah for the same reason Acts 1 6 dealt with. He did not restore the kingdom. He did not overthrow Caesar. In fact, he ignored Caesar completely. And talked about heaven and stuff. And so we're not interested in that. We want to know about right now on earth. We talk about it this way. Israel expected to be born a lion. But a lamb came. A lion was symbolic of warlike, strong, powerful, conquering. A lamb is someone who's submissive, easily overthrown, or killed easily. That's not their vision of their leader. They want a champion. Well, Christ said, no champion. Christ came here as a weak person, submissive and fragile. Now, when Jesus died, because they rejected him, God called Israel, through Paul's writing, Romans chapter 11, go there please, Romans chapter 11, look at chapter 10 and chapter 11, look at the first few verses in both chapters, you see Paul concerned for his nation. Don't forget, Paul was a terrorist. For the same reason, trying to overthrow Rome. But couldn't do it. Now, Paul said Israel is not saved. He said, I'm praying for their salvation. And he's saying, he's saying to us, Gentiles, why Israel is not yet saved. I was going to read all tonight, but look, you said here, Israel is called an olive tree. Symbolism, right? Olive tree. What's the symbol of tree in Israel today? Olive tree. tree. What do they plant? Olive trees. Right? And we Gentiles are called wild olive tree. Right when Christ died, God stopped talking to Israel. Stop, completely. They chased him out. And what happened here, when he stopped, God likened it onto a tree with a branch broken off. Because the tree is the kingdom of God. Are you with me? But God symbolically used a tree and called that nation of Israel, so he, he broke off Israel. And now I'm going to graft in the wild olives. I'll come back to this again in just a few minutes. But be continuous here. <coughs> so, what we noticed here, Daniel said nothing about the distance between the 6th and 9th week 
and the 70 weeks, 70th week. I call it the gap between the two periods. If it was continuous, everything would be fulfilled in history, but it's not. The 70th week is future, not yet fulfilled, even though it's not yet fulfilled. While it's on hold, God's not talking to Israel like he used to do. That's why Israel is being beaten up and around the world, going through their own faith. But God is still talking to somebody. Guess who? Gentiles. To provoke Israel to jealousy. He said, what do you provoke Israel to jealousy? Well, as you get more students in the Word of God, you understand what do you mean by that? Okay? Now, uh, when God stopped working with Israel and grafted in, here's how he did it. He built a church. The church started out with, what? Jews. 120 Jews. And for the first seven years, I told you last week, it was dominantly Jews only. And they don't want no Gentiles in it at all. When Peter, in their eyes, made a mistake and went to Cardia's house, they were upset. Until Peter explained to them, hey, I can't resist God. God said do it, and I did it. And now that, God poured on them what he gave us making us equal with them. Shocking to Israel, shocking to the apostles. And so, as time went on, the membership of Jews in the church declines. And the membership of Gentiles in the church increases. Until one population takes over the other. Are you with me? So what happened here, so in this period here, it's called the gap, we call it gap, and I nickname it <laughs> Gentile Apostolic Period. What do I call it? Gentile Apostolic, apostolic Period. Gentiles are practicing the apostolic message. They continue in the apostles' doctrine. Apostolic means you continue doing what the apostles taught at beginning at Jerusalem, in Judea, and then Samaria, and then to Ethiopia, and then the Cornelius, they keep on going on and on to end up in Canada. And it's still happening. So this gap here is called, right, the Gentile Apostolic Period, all right? During this time, God is not working with Israel in terms of dominion and kingdom situation. They have no king, they have no prophet, they have no priest, and they have no idolatry. I used to have before. How do I know that? In Hosea chapter 3, go there. It tells it very plainly that Israel would abide many days or many years without a prophet, priest, or king. That right now, are in the temple. They ain't got one. But we also know how long they're going to be in that situation. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 to 3 describe how long this will be. He says, two days and after two days. That means after 2,000 years, Christ is going to return to them. And they will return to him. Which puts you over here. Are you with that? Now, we are present in 2015. Can you see what's happened to our world today? Our world is going back to the, to the seven nations in the book of uh, Genesis and, um, and Exodus and all that, the, the, the pagan nations. We're going back to paganism, atheism, barbarism, you know, uh, sadism. We are going back to the days of painting ourselves up, muting our flesh, because we're losing God. What, what's actually happening here is God breaking off relationship with the Gentiles. After two days, the visit is over, and he's going to get rid of us and go back to 
his original tree. So he broke Israel off, grabbed us in, and now he's going to break us off and bring Israel back. I'm going to see that. Yeah. These are metaphors, symbolic languages. The tree represents Israel and us. So here, Israel got broken off. We got grafted in by, by the church. That's why Paul did three missionary journeys to do that. And now we come in the church, and we're still in the church, but now we're seeing a falling away. Branches are falling off in the paganism. Right? Yeah. While they're falling off, there's a reconciling back of Israel. The reconciling takes place when Israel became a nation in 1948. You see that? From not being a nation to coming back to becoming a nation. They're coming back into prominence with God. So while they're getting back to God, we are losing God. Gentiles around the world. It's probably got homosexuality, lesbianism, all these different uh, atrocities, genocide, and we'll go back to barbarism, back to unseemly behavior. In other words, God is giving us over to a reprobation, reprobate mind to do terrible things, which you call it, oh, that's gross. Well, that's where we came from. We're going back to what we used to be, slowly. Because what saved us was Israel's teaching on law and order and conduct which we didn't have before. Now, so here we are, this gap period here is two days long. We're broken off here, and Israel is about to enter in the 70th week and be grafted back into the kingdom. When she's grafted back in the kingdom, it's gonna be fun. Or falling off. Well, I'm gonna start my chart here. The gap is between the, the 6th and 9th week and the 70th week. The gap is actually 2,000 plus years long. So any day between now and tomorrow, God can close the gap on us. And the only way you to close the gap is to squeeze the church out. Get rid of the church and the gap is gone. And the 70th week and the 6th and 9th week will come together. Now, I'm going to expand to you this gap. Back to my chart again, the 6th and 9th week, they killed Christ. So he stopped talking to them. They're divorced, put to for the side. Not, not abolished, just put on hold. And he turned to, I will build my church. And the church would comprise not of Jews only, or Gentiles only, but Jews and Gentiles. So really this gap is a bridge builder. Where he bridges the difference between Jews and Gentiles in the body of Jesus Christ. Now, you read the book of Acts, and the conversions start up with, with Jews, up to Acts chapter 8. Seven, seven, and then they kill Stephen, who tried to get him to turn. They wouldn't. Acts chapter eight, the Ethiopian came in, and the Samaritan came in, right? Yeah. And then Acts chapter ten, Cornelius, the Italian the Europeans came in, right. and after that is just Asia, all of Asia, yeah. Turkey, all the, the known world back then. Now I'm going to jump ahead. In your battle is the Book of Revelation. The book of Revelation really is the epilogue, or it is the closure of the book of Acts. Revelation is not a book, it's an epistle written to his church, not to Jews, written to Gentile church, seven of them. Ephesus, right? Smyrna, Pergamos, Tyra, Tyra, Sardis, Philadelphia, you know, see it. Now, I, I've been to most of these places. I've been there. I've seen where they used to be. Now, <clears throat> that don't mean God have seven churches, folks. But their behavior and mannerism 
is a model or symbolic of the end time. Of the end time. The book of Revelation is maybe what Daniel saw and couldn't understand. It was sealed up. It was beyond his time. And not for his time. So Daniel made no reference to what God built in the church. So when Christ said, I'll build a church, that's foreign to them. I thought your church was in the wilderness. I thought, well, your church, this is my church. Not something Moses built. Something I built. I will build my church. I will. Acts 2, he did that. And notice, Book of Acts, turn to it right now. Book of Acts does not end with the end or epilogue like all the epistles does. There's no end to the Book of Acts. Why? Because it's not the end of the church. <laughs> The church continued beyond chapter 28. And in the epistle, you, you notice that. There was writing beyond Paul. When Paul died, the thing didn't die. John was around. Right? Paul died a certain time. But other apostles were still living. Follow me? Because he was executed with Peter. In Rome. Right? But others were alive. And they were in the world doing things for God. And they wrote epistles. To their churches where they couldn't get to them physically. So, in the gap, he said, I'll build my church in Acts. He built the church, Acts 2. In Revelation, he is consummating his church. Meaning, he's, I begin my church and now I'm going to close it now. I'm going to close the door to the ark. You can't get in. I open the door with the keys. All who want to come in, come on in until I shut the door. Visit is over. Gentiles, you're locked out. You're no longer my friends, you're my enemies. Like right now, Israel is an enemy to God. We are friends of God. It will reverse again when they're brought back in and we're thrown out. And Paul said, oh, the mystery and the wonders of Christ, how God performed these things. But he's the potter over the clay. You know what he's doing. Now, so, folks, you see this chart right here? Can I get graphic to see it? So we're still living in this period. Right now that I speak, we are in, we're living right now. Actually, you and I are living right now. In Revelation chapter 1, 2, 3, and waiting for 4 to be fulfilled, and then chapter 5, you're in heaven. So where are we right now? Up to chapter 3 and a half. <laughs> Trying to get chapter 4. Chapter 4 is when we're going to leave earth. Now, in every church, all of these conditions exist. The condition that existed in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Tyratyra, Sardis, Philadelphia, Nevisia. All those conditions are in this church. Different people behaving according to these people. That deal in the church with the spirit of Balaam, who makes the godly with the ungodly. The spirit of Cain, who said it doesn't matter how you worship God. False altar. Jezebel, I mean painted face women, wearing men's apparel, which is an abomination, and usurping the authority of the pulpit. We got those, Jezebel. And we have tolerance that's beyond grace, turn grace into lasciviousness. And Satan has a seat in the church, and all those bad situations or in those certain churches are in today. Now, folks, let me point something out to you here. Because now, I, I, I stopped talking about the 6th and ninth week. I'm discussing the gap to you. I'm talking about the gap. The gap to where we come in, we're the gap. All of us, the church. The church is the gap filler between those two points. Are you with me? That span the time. Now, right now, as I speak, okay, we have God dealing with the church and seemingly ignoring Israel. 
Now we know, theoretically, God has not abandoned Israel. He's still working with her, but not on the level as you read in the scripture. It's not visible as so. An example, between Malachi and, and, and the gospel, there are 400 years of silence when God quit talking to the nation of Israel. Why? Because they, they upset him. Again, they went into apostasy, etc., and gave birth to the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, and a whole bunch of zealotes and all that. And when Jesus Christ came, he came back to those people. They killed Jesus, along with Caesar's help. Now, I'm saying to you, in your, in your Bible, Book of Acts is about right now. That's why we preach the doctrine of the Book of Acts. We insist the keys are still being used in the churches. The gospel we preach is still the gospel of the Book of Acts. Next, we also insist that we have the same experience they had. Evangelism, mm -hmm. testimony, mm -hmm. we have persecution like they did. It's still a common faith once delivered to the saints. But if you notice, in Acts, it's not a book written to pastors or teachers. It's a history. It's a, it's a, History of the drama of the behavior of the apostles. You know why? Because we are taught to observe and obey what they did. Teaching the Gentiles to observe all things I commanded you and to do likewise. So the true church is not rewriting encyclicals and all that stuff that the Pope does and other religions does. The true church is a tell so do. We're told to follow the apostles, do what they did, like they did it, and continue in the apostle doctrine. And then the epistles, notice here, very quickly in your Bible, from Romans to the rest, they are not written to sinners. Please look at it. They are written to Christians who's already established in the faith. Are being established in the faith. The epistles are into these people. You know what it says? To the church in Corinth. To the church of Ephesus. The Colosseum church, the brethren. So, why are these trained different churches going there to teach a sinner to be saved? I can never understand that. It's like me taking you to to book of Leviticus and say, hey, you want to be you want to be a Jew? Obey this. No, that's not those. No, no, it doesn't work that way. So there's a definite plan for getting in the Jewish system. And so to get in the church, you have to come by with the door. And guess who the door is? Jesus. And the key of knowledge is, is how to get in. Right? When you get in, you have to do the apostolic way. Peter demanded Cornelius conform as they did. You have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, so you have to be baptized as we did. And do. All right, now, so, there's a difference between the letter from God to the church and the letter from the apostle to the church. In the epistles, he's writing to the saints. That's God's word. When they speak, God's fault. But in Revelation, God wrote directed to the pastor. He called the church a candlestick. Call the pastor as the stars in his hand, and call himself the one in the midst of them. In the midst of them, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. I mean, he's controlling the ministry among the saints. And so, Revelation is coming to bring to a close the Gentile apostolic era. Now, the last state of the church would be the state found in Laodicea. I don't need anything. <laughs> I got it all. Are people like that today? Of course you got that today. You can't tell them how to dress. You can't discipline them. You can't bring them to God in principle. They're going to tell you, friend, we can't endure that. Bye. <laughs> and they're going to do their own thing. Right? Yes. So there's going to be a fall in the way. A fall in the way. And God wrote to the seven pastors and said, guys, 
straighten this out before I get there. Otherwise, I'm going to fight against those people. Or I'm going to kill the converts. Or I'm going to throw them in the great tribulation. Mm -hmm. But it sure won't be mine. Mm -hmm. And only certain a few will be mine. So while God is doing this right now to the church, you know, right now Israel is in turmoil, out in trouble. We're talking about this stuff right now, but they're in trouble. But we in this two-day period, in the gap period, are also having problems. We are being hated of all men for his name's sake, just like they are. The world don't know him, so they don't know us. So we are in this period right here, right now, let's speak. We're seeing Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, and we're heading for chapter 4. Now, sad to say, the gate is being closed. It's falling away. Now, I know the pastor said, there's going to be an end time revival. Not true. You can't revive something that never was. Revival of Israel, yes. Revival of the church, no. No. The message of the church is great falling away. Israel, <coughs> he will revive Israel. After two days, he will revive us. Can I put it to you? The sixth chapter of Hosea said he would revive us. The word revival was never ever used toward an apostolic church. Because the apostolic church is never dead. And God told the church in Sardis, you're dead and you're not mine. <laughs> and told you to say, you're dead, you're not mine. I'll screw you up, you're not my church. So God don't have a dead church. God's church is alive because he's a living God. And only two people. He called dead and was was uh, the church in uh, uh, Laodicea. He said she's dead. The church in Sardis said they're, they're dead. I said I don't want either of you. He rejects them. So you're not mine. All right. Once we're broken off, you know, return back to Israel, and the seventieth week will begin. Now, once the seventieth week begins, then everything in Revelation chapter six, to chapter nineteen, come into play. The seals, the trumpets, and the vials. You better not be here. Because you will not be saved. I don't care what you do. You will not die for Jesus. I doubt it. You will have a strong delusion, friend. Uh, and you believe anything that was thrown at you. Because God said, I'll choose your delusion. Now, right here, when the seventh week start, the church will already be gone. Pray that your kind of world just escape these things which are coming upon the earth. The rapture is to take us off the earth so God can expose Israel to the world and the seals. Then, when he does this, this 70th week is used to bring an end to sin, both in the world and among Israel. That 70th week will usher in everlasting what? Righteousness. And to anoint the most holy, which is who? Jesus will be anointed publicly. And he will reign king of kings, Lord over all. And in the millennium, there will be no sinning, no dying. There will be everlasting righteousness, no more war. And everything down in the chapter 9 talk about in verses 20-24, will be fulfilled. Right now it's not. Okay? The gap will be closed. And Israel will become a nation once she's finished the 70th week. She'll become a nation and rule the world in 1,000 years. It's called the Jewish conspiracy. It's not true. <laughs> it's got ordained program. Now, can I go on? Don't tell me I've lost your church, but if you have been lost, Christ will find you, I promise you. <laughs> Every lost and found department in God's kingdom, they were found after we were lost. So we'll find you again. So we're back at this page. Now, I keep repeating these chapters and these diagrams back to you so you can understand it. Here it is. Seven, seven weeks of Daniel's vision started before 45 B.C. and end at the 69th week 
which is 33 AD, right? 33 AD, right here, Christ died. They rebuilt the temple, and they rebuilt the wall, and Christ was born, Christ ministered at age 30. Let me show you a little mystery here, folks. I want to look at this. Okay? Here is Jesus standing right here, right standing. And here's John the Baptist. The Old Testament said to Jesus, You must increase as the New Testament and the new priesthood and the new order, grace, and I, Moses' law, and the Aaronic priesthood, and everything in the Old Covenant must decrease. Understand that? Make sense? Good. Back to our diagram here. So here is a gap. I call it the this is my, I call it this the Gentile Apostolic period. But the church started not with Gentiles. It started with what? Jesus. So they must be grafted back into their own olive tree, which started in Acts chapter two. That means every Jew must receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior by believing is the Messiah, obeying Acts 2 3 as we know it, right. baptizing in Jesus' name, they must be filled with the Holy Ghost, and totally very plainly, in Zechariah 12, 13, and 14, that's going to happen. It's going to happen. The Spirit of grace will be poured upon them, and then look upon him whom they pierce, and all that, and learn who Jesus is. And then a fountain shall be opened in the house of David for uncleanness, meaning remission of sins. Here we are. I'm, I, I'm showing the same picture here. Seven weeks, two weeks, Christ was born, Christ died. A gap ensued. In 70 AD, Israel lost. Israel lost her temple. In 130 AD, they lost their city, and they never returned until 1948. And they're there now and will stay there and wait until the seventh week from reality. They're waiting. But Jerusalem at this moment is the cup of trembling in the hands of the hands of the let's call it here nations. The 12th chapter of Zechariah says that. Chapter 14 says, I'll gather all nations against Israel. I mean, the UN and everybody else. It's happening. So, why are we having all the problems in the Middle East? Because the Middle East is where Iraq is, is where Egypt is, is where Iran is. Is that correct? And all those countries, historically, they haven't talked about them. Right? And look at this. Break it down for you. When the gap is gone, it means that the church disappears. He built his church. So Acts 1, 6, become reality now. You're going to restore the kingdom. But first, I must deal with vagabond Jews, sinners among my people, God says. I'm going to purge Israel through the fire, through the storm. And Paul says, and Zechariah said, though Israel be as the sand of the seashore, Yet only a remnant shall be saved. What's the remnant? What's left after the scorching? That means one third will be saved. I'll pass the last third to the fire, and that one third are going to be the apostolic Pentecostals. Now, Pentecostal is not a denominational name, it's the name of the Feast of Pentecost. All those festive feasts are prophetic. <coughs> the Passover was prophetic. It's now our communion to us, to the Jews, the Passover. Christians don't have a Passover. We were never in Egypt. But we have a communion. Which Amen. points to Calvary. Amen. Passover points to Egypt and the slain land, right? We, in communion, have a, a Passover that deals with what? Christ's death. And we pass from death to life. Our, our Egyptian wicked one is Satan. Right. Mm -hmm. All right? When the gap is gone, what do you have here? Seven weeks for Jews, six, two weeks for Jews, and last week for Jews. 
No Gentiles involved. Anybody tell you that, that Gentile means sin in Revelation, it's a lie. When you draw this diagram, you can see it's a lie. It's all Jewish all the way. Because God is dealing with the Jews in the seven week, six two weeks, and the last week, seventh week, Jews only. Now, we need the Revelation. And I'll point out to you, when the gap is gone, this seal revealed to us the gap is gone. He's built his church, right? First of the gap. Now the gap is gone, right? Church is built. Church is going to be with Jesus. And then he'll return to the 70th week. Now, no Gentiles are mentioned in Daniel's 70th, 70 weeks. It's about the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, the city, right? It tells it very plainly. Don't make it anything different. It tells what it's all about. It's for them and them alone. No church is mentioned, no Gentile is mentioned there. So after chapter 5, chapter 5 of the Revelation, the 4 of Revelation, is where the church is raptured to be with Jesus. And the word rapture is not in the Bible. It's the word is caught up. Or be translated, changed in a moment in the of God. God's going to change my body, if I'm still saved, from mortal to immortality. Bam! Spirit of life. Gone! It's like no. Come on, boat, gone. Don't close. That's it. Once we leave this body, we go right to the throne, called the, the beam of seat or the judgment seat of Christ, not for salvation, but for stewardship. What have you done since I saved you? Now, the, the mere fact that the rapture you're saved. But you may not be as blessed with riches and honor as others will be. Some people's time on earth was spent on materialism and their works are burnt up. They're lost out. Well, they're saved. Well, they're sold as saved. They'll be the poorest people in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and those who work for God, that's why we work so hard for God and do the thing we do for God and live for God because we know. I'd rather be sweat out and be worked out and give everything I can for Jesus. He can't take nothing here from this earth except your treasures you laid up in heaven. Right. So you got nothing to have in front of you. You're poor. You're broke. You're bankrupt. And when we tell you to give, we're, we're doing you a favor when we ask you to give. We're doing you a favor when we involve you. Because it's a sin not to involve you. But it's a sin not to make you do anything for God. Because then you're unprofitable as a he doesn't want you in his kingdom. All right? Now, so the judgment seat of Christ, you get up there, and he gives you your reward. The Bible tells you a different crown people are going to wear. Different crowns, but all have the same gown, and throne, and robe, and robe, and so on. Now, we see Jesus as the world don't see him, the glorified Christ, like he never showed himself on earth. While it's going on, this is taking place. The 70th week be fulfilled. And we're going to watch Jesus Christ open the seal. Literally watch him open it. Open the seal means he alone has the power to control events on earth. Like Moses had power over the ten plagues. When Moses spake, the plagues released their powers. Right? Lice came, frogs came, da da da. Only Moses said it. And when Christ speaks it, it's going to happen. Amen. Right? So Christ is going to reveal that Christ did. So uh, in chapter 6 of Revelation, we watch the seals open up. And then we see the first half of this one week. This is what's going to happen. And we'll start later on, even though we've done so before. Revelation chapter 6. Talk about the seven seals being opened up, and the, right and the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, are revealed. That means world events. The up to World War III are going to be taking place. Where is the church? Up in heaven. Does Israel know us? Absolutely not. It's like this. Look at an example. And this is a type, it's a type of shadows. When Joseph was sold, like Jesus will be sold, 
They went and sold him. Thought he was dead. They thought he was dead. They wrote him off. But when they met him, he's king. And had a bride. Same with Israel. When Israel know who Jesus is, they don't realize he once was dead, but he's alive. Number two, they're going to find him with a bride. The church is called the bride of Christ. I didn't mean that. I was saying that. That's his wife. Well, the marriage takes place in chapter 4. Coping to be with him, get married to Jesus. And then you come back with him in chapter 19 to fight wars with him. Now, when the gap is closed, some things are going to happen here. The seeds are open, and the, the trumpet and the vows is the wrath of Jesus. What he didn't do the first time, he will do when he comes the second time. Fight. <laughs> the first time he came, Right here, he came riding on the colt of an ass, a donkey, which means symbol of peace. When he comes the second time, he's coming back riding on a white horse, symbol of what? War. Now, so this seven, first seven years, I mean the first three and a half years, is to release the seals. And the last three and a half years, is where Jesus Christ got up and fight. Oh, in the midst here, Number 666 will come to me, to Israel. I think Jeremiah 30 and verse 6 is called Jacob's trouble. And also in Jeremiah 4, God told uh, Israel, when you're in great tribulation, if you will repent, I'll hear you. Now, the church must know where she's coming from. Let me reflect back on where you're coming from. Here is Israel in, in the book of... Uh, Romans 11, he called her a what? Tree, right? A fig tree. Uh, I mean an olive tree, right? Jesus called her a fig tree. And Paul called her an olive tree. They're both correct. You know, I know that? Book of Judges. The book of Judges? When they killed all the sons of uh, Jehu, and the parable was made for the fig tree and all those trees? Okay. All right, now, God broke off Israel right here, the sixth and ninth week, and grabbed us in, which we call the church, to fill the gap of the missing branch. I'm the vine, and you are the? And to go bear fruit, I'm going to do what? I'm going to do what? I'm going to cut you off. And if you bear fruit, I'm going to do what? Prune you. Right? So fruit is important. All right? So here we are. It's going to be 2,000 years long. Right? From 33 AD to 2,000 plus. Then the apostasy sets in in, in, in the Christian church, which there is today. And when it appears to be so, God's going to break us off. Right? Break us off out of this thing here. And put Israel back in. Let me see that. And put Israel back into her own plans. Because Jesus alone is the root and the offspring of church, right? All right. Now, I'm going to understand this. Amen. <laughs> well, lots of you all are you all in the maze of. Galapagos, Galapagos Island. <laughs> I'm coming to somewhere in here. We can find fire hole on me here. I'm repeating the same thing over and over. Okay? Look at me, folks. One more time. Repetition is a secret of learning. Seven to weeks. You're going into three segments. One, two, three. Very easy. Seven, seven, two, and one is what? 72. 72 seven. is what? 62. I mean, 62, sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm testing your knowledge here. You're, you're watching. <laughs> you are watching. 62 weeks. And 7, sorry. Makes what? 69? 
and plus one, 70. In between 69 and 70 is a what? A gap. Right? The first 69 is Jewish. The gap is 2000. Church age. Church age. Can you see that, folks? Yes. And the last week is Jewish. After the last week comes the millennium. When God says, that's it! I'm not putting up with Jews or Gentiles anymore nonsense. I'm going to reign. I'm going to say that. He's going to reign. <laughs> That's amazing. He's putting up a lot of stuff today, but when he's changed his way, he's going to change on us, right? And so, this is it. You ain't coming in. You're coming in. You stay out, you come in, da da da. Yeah. My way, and there's no other way. All right? So, the one week here. So, I've shown you here the breakdown of it. Can you see the folks? Yes. Amen. I can see that. So, how does God that fulfilled? We're doing that right now. When you type a pastor in Neil, you're making the same journey as a secretary for Paul. When you give you're giving like Barnabas gave to the church. When a husband and a wife come and teach somebody, you are behaving like a quill and persistent. When you obey the pastor and go where he sent you, you're obeying like Timothy. And when you say, I ain't going to do it, you're behaving like die trophies. <laughs> <laughs> and when you resist the truth, your eyes are on the cup of Smith. And when they decide to wear your pants or your makeup or your lipstick, you say your jewelry, then you become Jesse Bell. Amen. Hello? Amen. And when you can't see the difference between the God and the God getting married, you're like Balaam. Right. Mm -hmm. You know the truth, but you compromise it. Mm -hmm. And God said, We'll cut you off, but I cut Israel off. That's right. <laughs> Paul said, If you did to Israel, who's natural, can't imagine you, or that not, you don't really belong. <laughs> At the airport, I saw a family, and I could tell that the girl was adopted. She almost looked like the family, but I could tell she was adopted. And even though I could tell there was love there, she swapped back in, you know, as if she not where really belongs. belongs. Stand back, watching, you know, she's not really getting involved. I could tell she was adopted, you could tell them. Everything was different about her. And uh, it, it showed. Well, guess what, church? You and I are adopted. You're a Jew inward, but you can't show it outward. Mm -hmm. But God requires the same thing from you and me as it is from Israel. Be ye holy, for I am. Come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Because all those things Israel violated and thought God wouldn't throw her off. And Paul said, just a minute, you Gentile. You get a free pass here. Let me tell you something here. The 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, go there, please. This is a warning to this church. Now, you know, people say, well, Pastor Neil, you know, you, you preach so hard, my friend, you want a good doctor. That's right. Amen. I'll cut you open because you don't get a second chance. You get one chance. That's right. A jubilee is 70 years. You'll have one chance to a jubilee. You don't have to. You know what you believe in? Time of release. Right. And you're going to live to be 310, 70. So that pastor, or woman that you in, don't forget who they are. They're Balaam's, mm -hmm. Diatrophes, Nicholas. Nicholas being anti nominism, no law. Do as you feel like. Mm -hmm. There are men of God like that. It sounds good, but they're deceiving you. Because Jesus Christ is particular about how you look. He said, this man did not have on the wedding. You will not come and spoil my plan. Out. <laughs> he, I meant what he, he meant what he said. All right. The 10th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. Go there, please. Put your clothes. I can tell by your eyes. It's not dreamy eyes. It's little sleepy eyes. Wait, how come you got those sleepy eyes? That's what's beside you. Those are not dreamy eyes. Those are sleepy eyes. So wake up. Wake up. You folks have enough being the pastor. <laughs> Wake up. Oh, 
Yeah. All right. They will. <laughs> First to ten. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were in the cloud, and all passed through the sea. We don't. And we're all baptized to Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. I'll give you spiritual meat right now. And you don't like it. They can see that. You want to eat some garlic. Well, it's all right. <laughs> you got to eat manna anyhow. Amen. And did all drink of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was? Was Antichrist. Christ. No, Christ. Christ. All right, read on, please. Next picks first. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, pleased that folks, yes. for they were overthrown in the wilderness. wilderness. Why? Now these things were for our now, church. Let anybody fool you. If you did to Israel, it'll do to you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Paul says you you have free pass. If you break them off, you'll break you off. Mm -hmm. Amen. You didn't compromise with us. That's why I don't think God's going to let this world off. If he did, they used to put us to Sodom. Right. Backsliders, if he lets you off, they better go back, uh, put us to his lost wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. And a part us to Ophir and Phineas, Ophir and to Korah, the rebellious boys who rose against Moses. I figure I'm going to do my way. I don't care what you say. It's my way or the highway. Right. God killed them all. Yes. Right. Amen. Huh? Yes. And you know, there's also Saul, who figure he's king. There's nobody but himself. God said, you're out. Right. Hey, what about those guys? And mm -hmm. Jezebel and Ahab and, and Joseph and all those guys. They're written for my learning and yours. Yes. In other words, I'm not done the church off. So I'm just giving them a chance to be saved. That's right, amen. Mm -hmm. He said, All the sheep I have, which were not of, get the piece of the picture. All the sheep I have, which were not of this fold. Right? right. They call us dogs, yes. aliens, foreigners, strangers. But God called us fellow heirs of the kingdom. Hello? And we're going to be grafted into one, but in the church alone, we're grafted in. There's no racism in the church. That's right. There was in Israel. Mm -hmm. There still is in Israel. We can't be in the church. If it is, you're lost. I don't care who you are. You won't make it. That's right. Because the church is the model right. of how the kingdom is going to be mm -hmm. in days to come. All right? Mm -hmm. And so after that one week, there will be a millennium here. And if you read on that chapter, folks, read it. It tells us, do not go that route like they did, because they're for our learning, our admonition, etc., and so on. All right, so we know this gap is going to be closed. Once it's closed, then the Jews are grafted back in. So in closing, read for yourself. Now, when I was in your age, at your time in life, I wish I had all this stuff taught to me, because I want to know the whole counsel of God is the whole Bible. You can't just stay in one part of the Bible forever. You've got to grow up. You have to stop drinking milk and eat strong meat. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got to exercise your spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. Because you're called to the kingdom this time in life for the end of time. You're in the latter time right now. The last days. You're dealing with Antichrist spirit. You're dealing with seducers and Evil doers getting worse and worse. You're going to age up the beheading of people, hatred of Christianity. You're seeing blasphemy. You're seeing sodomy. You're seeing atrocities that they never saw. Because this is the time. You are the last people in the one hour to fix this job or they'll be lost. Now, folks, in closing here, Daniel, God showed Daniel, two, in Daniel chapter 2 the victory of Jesus over the ten toes. Israel, not mentioned. Daniel 7, the victory of the Messiah against the beast, presented Christ. Israel struggled with him and the Gentiles. Daniel 9, the apostles of Israel making a peace treaty, which Obama and the rest are trying to get Israel to sign, and many of them failed, but God 
have chosen a man to fulfill that role, like you chose Judas. You can't preempt God. In the fullness of time, when Christ takes the way, it's got to be revealed. Daniel 10 gives the explanation of Greece in the last days and the role of Persia, the one that said Israel should not cease, should cease to be a nation, right? Read Psalm 83, 1 to 10, read the folks, and you'll see in the newspaper, they're late in telling us what's going on. We know what's going on. The position of Russia, is equal to 37, 38, 39. We understand that, right? Israel's a nation, Israel in the Holocaust, is equal to 37, we know that. It's gonna happen, right? Daniel chapter 11, you the Jews who forsook the Mosaic Covenant, and took side with Antichrist and the Arabs. There are Jews who take side with the Arabs. They're right. with them against Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, Daniel said, talk about them. And uh, there are the apostate Israelites who Christ called vagabond Jews or sinners among his people will be purged out in the tribulation. All right? They abandoned Moses and his teaching. In Daniel 12, we find about the final showdown, but no mention of a church. I mean, he jumped right to the white throne judgment. It's amazing. Isn't it something? Mm -hmm. He just ignored a million and right to the right to judgment and says all the books were open and the dead and so on before Christ. He jumped past a lot of stuff. But in Revelation, God opened up the eyes of John and said, don't seal the book. The 10th chapter of Revelation said, don't seal the book. Go tell everybody. Tell what you saw. So the gap, the Gentile apostolic period, is in Revelation chapter 1 to 5. That's the closure of the apostolic period. I believe in a few days the true church will be gone. Just like the true Bible is not available anymore. Just like the message of the apostles' doctrine ceased to be important. The people cannot endure sound doctrine. They can't even take a long service. They've gone to one service a week. Pretty soon there's no service at all. The gap is being closed. When the gap is closed, when the church is gone, in chapters 5 and 6, the church is gone. And then, when the gap is closed, all hell breaks loose. Everything God says in the seals the trumpets of the vows will be on this earth fulfilling the 13th chapter of the book of Isaiah. You should read it sometime. God described the pain that's going to hit those guys. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 will talk about it. And also 2 Peter chapter 3 discussed it. What's going to happen in the world? You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Jesus said, pray that you become worthy. If the Lord says it, you better believe it. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6 to 12 will be fulfilled after Revelation 19 that won the war. Now, folks, Jude prophesied about you. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his what? Saints that stand to fight. All those cheap turning used to do. You'll be kicking butt when, when Jesus come back. <laughs> the blood will be up to the horse's bridle. That's pretty high. In the valley of Jehoshaphat. Okay? This is very important. I point this out to a friend. If you notice in Revelation, the only people who are sealed, and you should know this, folks, because a lot of apostolics get it wrong. They're wrong with their teaching. There's no salvation for Gentile in the book of Revelation. None. Revelation is a book of judgment. It starts at the house of God. The first five chapters, that's a judgment on the church of God. Then after chapter, from, from 6 to 11, it's judgment on Israel. From 6 to 12. And from 12 onward, it's judgment on the world and the beast and the false religion. But judgment must begin in the house of God. So that's why those seven churches are being judged by God. One guy said to me, 
Pastor, are you judging me? Why are you judging me? Da, 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 da. And, and five minutes, I find I saw him in a porn shop. And he didn't know I see him. You try to get between me and my God. Da, 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 da. He has the right to do it. Da, da, da. You know? Confucius says, <laughs> stuff shirt, cheap as starch. <laughs> well, I caught him on my cell phone. I called the man to the store and said, now, would you do me a favor, please? I said, who do you announce this name as he called? This guy from the police, bring him to the phone. <laughs> and I'm watching with the distance, man. I gave him the phone. He said, hello. I went, <laughs> <laughs> let him be with that for conscience sake. I said, click. I thought, yeah. Judgment began in the house of God. God judged you and me first. I'm telling you, friend, you and a sinner side by side, that sinner could be as wretched as Hitler, and nothing happened to him. And you just touched the wrong thing, and all hell break loose on him. He can't figure it out. Why, God? Because you're mine. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And the worst thing God could ever do to you and me is ignore you. If God ever ignore you and you're living in sin, you're done. He, he lost interest in you. You're, it's true. He wrote you off. Most people who have long-term backsliding got suddenly. Bang without remedy. Just drop that boom. Gone. <laughs> Can't even pray. Oh God, forgive me. God don't give that chance at all. Is it boom? You're gone. Dead instantly. Amazing, isn't it? And others, oh God. Give me a chance. Mm. To be merciful. Mm -hmm. All right? So it says only Jews were sealed in Revelation. Chapter 7. Don't let anybody fool you. Those are not Jehovah's Witnesses like you were told. It's a lie. It's from the 12 tribe of Israel. Yeah. And notice who's left out. The tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Dan. And go study why they're left out. And don't walk in their footprints. Amen. Because you would block it out too. You told one of the seven churches, I'll block your name out. Right. Says, I'll, I'll move your candlestick. Mm -hmm. The one says, I'll spit you out. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus talking to us. Right. No, I can't talk to my wife like that. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'll fight against you. I'll spew you out. I'll cut you off. You ain't walking with me. That's how he talks. To his bride. To me. Now we're, I didn't put up with Israel, I won't put up with you. <laughs> and the reason why he died, he died to get rid of Israel. So he could marry this woman he wants to marry. Rather kill her, he killed himself. I say marry him. Amen? Praise God. Now, everyone in Revelation that's not saved is marked with a mark. Everybody who's saved is sealed. Except the devil. But you're going to seal. One seal is to mean you ain't moving from where I put you. And one seal is the name of the Father, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 13, go there, please. Here's the answer. Everyone in this church who was born again saved, you are sealed. You are sealed on you right now of ownership. The devil knows you. Even when you don't know yourself, the devil knows you. For you're sealed. You stand out like a star. I mean, you stand out. People can pick you up. People can point you out. Sometimes cry you out. <laughs> because your spirit troubles them. After you believe, you are sealed. What does seal mean? Our district was sealed. It's a legal tender. What does seal mean? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of promise. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm finished. But the question was asked at the beginning, when will you restore the kingdom? I said after he finished the 70th week. The kingdom is the millennium. 
Israel is going to reign for a thousand years and fulfill all the Abrahamic covenant. Where will you be, church? You own everything, he asked. You can have it. Yeah. The folks said, you won't go to heaven. That's because they won't be going. I don't mean I won't be going. I'm going to be there with Jesus. Now, folks, what's your responsibility? Your responsibility right now is to go tell everyone you know. I don't care how little you know, it's more than they know. Amen. And you can't just sit there and not tell them. you will be unfruitful. you will not be useful. Go tell them. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. And tell them what you know. Reach out and touch lives. I'm telling you this, that you may go tell others. I'm giving you the tools and the ammunition to learn. So, Pastor, I can't understand this. Not true. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, yes. will bring much to your memory every yes. time I talk to you. Amen. 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 Are there any questions on this side? Any questions? Thomas, any questions? Michael? No question? Well, you preach this in the sun, I want to hear you preach it. Any question? Any question? So the one week after the gap is the tribulation? The one week is the tribulation. Tribulation? Yes. Yes. Now, one week is covered by Revelation chapters 6 to 19. The entire chapter covers it. Well, I mean, seven years. Seven years, yeah. Seven one, years, three and a half, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. How do we know if we're re like reading in creation, a year is 7,000 years, but in the gap, it's 1,000 years, <coughs> but then in the 69 weeks, it's a week. one year? <laughs> how do we know how long the year is if we're just reading? If the church will allow me, I'll show it to you right here. <laughs> I'm going to show you that. I'll take five minutes to show it to you. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. You can follow it right here. Look at it. Right there. I wasn't even done. <laughs> I wasn't even give it to that. I wasn't even done. That's amazing. I want to rule that. <laughs> the invisible hand. But I, want, I want to show it to you right now. Let me take those. Okay. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Saturday, and then Sunday, and back to this, right? The cycle, right? All right, Here, this, is a one, this is a one week, seven days. When God made the world, right? The first God did was a creative day. Which in the evening and the morning. Correct? That's the evening and the what? Morning. Evening and the morning. After that, he talked about thinking, you know, seven of those. Right? Times seven. But not true. Times six. Times six. Right? And then he comes to the seventh one. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna then he comes to the seventh one, the seventh day. The seventh day has no evening, no morning. It's undefined. Or start in the morning and doesn't end. It's eternity. What I'm trying to tell you is this. I'm trying to tell you this. Here is eternity. Here's eternity. And he puts it here for time. Our earth is the only place where time is relevant. Time is not relevant in heaven and not relevant below the earth. Okay. Once you die, time is irrelevant. Okay? Once you leave our earth atmosphere, you, you quit dealing with time. You're outside of time now. You're in a, a, a non time dimension zone. Undefined. Right. Eternal. So, that's, that's creation. Even in the morning, even in the morning, even in the morning, right? And then it says the sixth day God did it. On the seventh day he rested. 
There's no even more cyclic. There's no complete cyclic. It's left open. It never ends. The rest is forever, eternal rest. And I know the question comes to mind. Ne next thing is, number three, then God says, let's make man. And let's make also uh, a, a system for man. Okay? So what he did here, he made here the sun and the moon. Right? That's a cycle. This is for man. Right? For man. It's for man. This is not for man. This is for man. Right? Yeah. And so you got a week. Jesus told us that. How many hours in a day? 12 hours in a day. Yeah. Jesus said that, right? Yeah. So 24 hours make what? One day. Okay? So right here is seven days. You call one week. But each of these goes from evening to morning, right? It's a continuous cycle. It's not left open at the first one. The first one's left open. It's not based on the sun or the moon or the stars, right? Are you with me? So this is a time within a time. I can see that. It's a time with, you follow me, sister? A time within a time. Creative time. A man's day. And then he told Adam, when you sin, Adam, in the day you said he's going to die. So Adam sure sinned, didn't he? So what did he do? He went got sin in his life. And guess what? He didn't drop dead. Sin come in the picture. Did Adam die? Did Adam die? Absolutely not. I don't live to be what? 939 years. 939 years. So why did he die? Because David and others told us, right? A day with the Lord, so people told us, is what? A thousand years. A thousand years. So did Adam die within that day? Yes. He sure did. Everybody. Everybody died, right? Within that day, no one lived to be a, a thousand years. Yeah. So, right, it doesn't, I'm not talking about this day, or this day, or it's going to drop dead. He didn't. What about this one here? I mean, God told Israel, after two days I raised you up, and the third one, here, which is my sight. If that was true, the prophet said, today, then two days later, it should, it should be happening, right? right? It never happened. So we put it all together, and then the week, the week comes in. Laban, Laban says, fulfill her what? Week. Her week. Which we know a week for Laban is seven years. Right? Now you put it all together. So how's it looking together? This is called the creative. The one creative. Day, dispensation of that. Day, and then he got man's day. Right? That's 7,000. Right? And this one is 1,000. And this one is uh, 24 hours. You said 12 hours in a day. Now the question is now, which one is he referring to in Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2? Are you sure talking about this one? No, this one. What about this one? And all these are days. Called spell day, D A Y. We have different values. And you have to rightly apply them. This is why the misinformed, the uninformed, go in there and say the battle of the country itself. It says God rested. Now, if God rested on the, on the seventh day, what is he doing in the garden making a man? It meant God rested from creating things. 
but God is still working redemptively and saving man. For example, for the Jews right here, 360 days equal one year. Right? But for the Roman system, it's 365 or whatever, a fraction. Now, I did all this to show you this here. Where are we today? The first creative day, God did something, the first one. The second one, God did something. The third one, God did something. The fourth one, God did something. There's no man on earth, right? Can we do something with <laughs> I knew my wife would say that. First creative day, right? The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and he stops. He stops creating things. Well, who's not, when did he mean man? Adam is right here. Adam right here. That's the first Adam. The last Adam. Between these two Adam, it's 4,000 years. You can prove it in the genealogy of the Bible. Genealogy of chapter 5, with me, mm -hmm. and also in Chronicles, first in Chronicles, and in also in, in Matthew and Luke. Okay. It gives you a trail of ages, yeah. which lets you know. So here is 4,000 years. Then it'll be 2,000 years since Christ to here. A.D., right? And then there's a thousand years to come called the millennium. Then the end of the world. So, do it this way. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, what do you think about just me here? If I know these days are all co equal, evening and morning. Right? Evening, morning. So the seventh is where? There's no evening, there's no, there's morning right here, but there's no evening. There's no, because evening means end of day. Morning means beginning. They just keep on going. I can see that. There is no closure. Do I make sense over there? You look puzzled, sister. I'm saying here, this is creation. The first creation, Genesis chapter 1, the first day, even in the morning, the first day, even in the morning, the second day, even in the morning, even in the morning, even in the morning, even in the morning. Right? They said God rested on the seventh day. What is the seventh day? It's undefined. Is it not? Go ahead. Okay, everything you just said makes sense. But I still don't understand. If I open to an Old Testament book that I'm not familiar with and it says day, how do I know which day it's happening? You would not know except someone teach you. If he said that. He said, how can I except someone teach me? So if I the Jews miss Jesus, right? They missed him completely. Or they missed, they missed his word, what he said. He said, you do err not knowing scripture. So a lot of people go to the Bible and say it contradicts itself, but don't know how God counted. Look at an example. Here's Abraham. Here's, here's Abraham. Right? 
and then you become Abraham. H-A-M, right? And God said, take thine only son, thine only son, and offer him up. Now, is that statement true, or is it not true? It's true, but he had more than one son. <laughs> <laughs> you want to plug us or not? <laughs> Did he lie? He does not count. He is not for a son. King Saul was not the first king of Israel. Abimelech crowned himself king in the book of Judges. And he's not counted. Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> was not the first Gentile king, but God made him the head of the Gentile kingdoms. Because the Bible is not a history book, it's a book of redemption. And I'm trying to say to you, this earth is not what? Old as you think it is. You know how old this earth is? It's one, which is seven, if this is 7,000 years long, then this has to be 7,000 years long. Am I right? right? So this, 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 this. So he said, one, two, three, four, five, six times seven is what? 42,000 42, years. years old. That's how old the earth is. Now, Carter and Ford, they didn't put that past him, arguing and all that, and even and whatever, nonsense. <coughs> and these billions and billions and trillions of years is all hypothesis, not proven by any, any sensible thinker. I think what Sister um, O'Donnell was saying, how does she read on her own? Our, like saying, she won't. Said different days there. She won't. <laughs> so when you read one day in the Old Testament, how can she figure out which day it is? I just want to know. Help to figure out which day they're talking about. Well, a, a reader on their own will not figure it out. Because that's why God did it. Huh? He concealed his mystery in his word. Hello? Well, uh oh, it's Jesus. Before Abraham was, I am. He's going to stone him and kill him, right? Why? Because he said that. Is he saying in his natural birth? <laughs> He wasn't Abraham? No. But they, that's what they thought. He's saying, in, before I came to this flesh, I am um, before Abraham. Right? Mm -hmm. This crawl this temple, and in three days I raised it up. When they said, oh, it was 14 or 17 years to do this thing. And you're going to do it in three days? This guy is mad. You get my point? They misread what he said. Like the Sabbath. Saturday is not the Sabbath. That word's not in the Bible. Why do we call the Saturday the Sabbath? That's a Roman pagan name. That's not what they call it in the Bible. In the Bible, but we call it that, and we live with it. Well, I'm going to argue with them over it. But notice, Christ was resurrected on a Sunday, which is what the first day of the week. Is Sunday for you the first of the week or Monday? For you it's Monday. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? But not to the Bible. Sunday is the first day of the week. So my ways, God says, are not as your ways. So isn't that, sorry, isn't that why they call Sabbath day? Because it's the second day. That means next Sunday is the first day. The first day is the day of rest. Because this is the rest he's talking about. Eternal rest. Rest means no sin. Not just physical rest. But God uses the physical to teach the spiritual, right? So God wants you to go into eternal rest. Right? So when you receive the Holy Ghost, you've entered into sabbatical rest. He said, let no man judge you with what? Days. Because you've entered into that rest. In Matthew 11, 20 and 7, 28, come unto me, all that labor and labor, and I'll give you what? Rest. rest. He's going to give you a day, or he's going to give you the Holy Ghost. Rest me in the Holy Ghost. And said, so this is the rest 
and this is the refreshing, right? Yeah, they don't understand that. So, yes, this is really true, and, and, and I'm ashamed to admit this. Many apostolic preachers have abandoned, I don't even know about this, or even abandoned even to think about this, trying to please science and philosophy, of which we are warned that the disputes of our world are deadly dangerous. With some having professed, have gone what? Shipwreck. This is correct. This is the right teaching. Now I got a book uh, I got here, a sister telling with it called Creation. Go buy that book, folks. It's upstairs. And I don't want your money, but it's, I don't give it to you because you want to respect it. But it's called Creation. You got to go through it with creation, and I I have been to a discussion with God with a PhD and smarter than me, a mathematician, and try to tell about scientific creation. Let me show you a big lie. Genesis one, go there, please. Genesis chapter one. Or you know, I'll go there. Anybody, please, you need to go there. Satan is guilty of many things, but this one. He said, I'm innocent, and I agree with him. <laughs> the first time I agree with Satan is right here. Come, I agree with him. Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, now, church, what was there before the beginning? Nothing. So God says, A dot, bang, beginning. Right? You, you are before all things. He is before all things. So with him there's no beginning or ending of days, right? right. Now God's a beginning right here. And here's the ending right here. Because when the seventh we confess and the minimum is finished, this battle will be, will be useless, worthless. It's all fulfilled. Don't need it. Throw away. I must have that. Not a problem to God or us. Now what God's trying to say here. In the beginning, he created a beginning. What's what? What it says? In the beginning, God. Right? So God before the beginning. And he created heaven and earth. Now, next verse says what? Okay. He said the earth was a form and void. That pre presupposes there was an earth before the beginning. Well, he's talking about there's an earth there, but the earth has no shape or form. Right? It implies that. So they said there's a big gap between verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 is where God created the world, and verse 2 is where Satan destroyed. And they go to Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, and it says Satan was there and Satan did that. There's no scripture that says Satan destroyed the world. If anybody destroyed the earth, it says man did in Revelation. That's right. And it says Satan. It says man did. Which is going to be in World War III. With new creativity. Now, what verse 1 says is a compendium of the entire total work. Creation. God says, I mean, God created heaven and the earth. Done. I mean, everything God was created in that one verse. That one verse speaks of all that God did. Right. And then now it's going to give you an explanation of the processing he went through. Are you with me? Right. He's telling you how he did it. The sequence of events. Now, if God don't give us things like the first day, a second day, a third day, how do we count? There's no counting system. There's no nomenclature, there's no naming of systems. God to give thing a name, right? Oh, well, how, how do you, you know, in mathematics we do you call infinite of our infinity calculation and calculus. When did that? When did that? Okay, there's one brain over here. Oh my God, that's about a system, right? In calculus, the infinity, you, can, you never arrive at it. It's, it's just beyond, beyond reach. You always approach, but never can get to it. And you got these recurring numbers in in uh, in uh, calculations. Now, what I'm trying to say, you guys, 
Verse 1 is a summary mode of all of that. It's right. all encompassing. Right. No sin, creation of earth. I think mean, God gave us what, how he did it. So you can take verse 1, stretch it, right. and fit in there the seven days right. of six, creation. Six. The sixth day. Understand that. Right. And you step outside of that, you step right back into eternity. Right. <laughs> That's right. Are we going to see that? Yes. You see that system of behavior, you're going right back into eternity. I'm looking at what he did. Because right. everything moves in him. Right? Right. Well, now, in closing, when I was at college and we write reports, we were always required to do this. We did the investigation and research. And we always had to tell the, the solution up front. And then, if you want to know more how I write my answer, you read the back of the report. Right. So that the person reading it doesn't have to go through all the mess I went through. He, he, he chooses to go if he wants to. And that's what that is. Now, another thing is, but God said, let us make men. That chapter doesn't tell you that angels are created. They even exist. Because they're not important then. Right? God wants you to know he's, a, he's alone and solitary. That ain't the devil is mentioned. How come the devil showed up in chapter 5 or 3? There was no devil before that. Where did he come from? Because it's not about them. It's about him. Right? And now, as they come in the picture, he mentioned them. But we know, I believe, first it was God. God didn't want to be alone. So God made angels and cherubims and seraphims. And God said, that's not enough. And God said, I want to make a man. Right? Now, everything at that time has his image, his attributes, because they, they depend on him. They are created beings. So we made man said, let's make man. God speaking as a king went to his council, his people, and I counseling him. But who did the work, them or him? He did. <laughs> he did. Right? God did the work. And so Trinitarian said, see, God the Father, God the Son, God. I said, where did you get that from? Where does it God the Son or God the Holy Ghost? There's no Holy Ghost even mentioned. This is the Spirit of God. He said it was holy. It's the Spirit of God. So, folks, get that book. I'll answer your question. You kept these people later than they want to be here. But that, did, did you clarify it? Well, you sure not. Now, I, tr I want to tell you right now. Most preachers and most Bible scholars have not a clue what I just said right here. They all count out to the uh, scientists because they're trying to become civilized spiritualist, nonsense. God does not conform to scientists. He makes them look stupid. Corinthians says that. How about on this side, the question? Kendra, I know you have a lot of questions, Kendra. Why did God make glasses? He didn't. She's right here. She's hiding behind stuff. Any question on this side? Go ahead, sis. So, like the signs of the earth, like we're in the last days, right? Yes. Um, like even the trucks that they have their the license plate 666, so the world knows, like, you know, Satan is taking over. Uh, the other day, I see the guy with the uh, tattoo in the back of his head, and he had the um, Hitler, you know, the mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what if. What I'm getting to, so the world is coming out in all these, like the signs are everywhere, even in the, in the sites, you know, where all these signs, all these, you know, uh, the skeleton and everything, like even in the trucks and the stickers, even in the office, and it's coming out everywhere, so yeah, it's, it's coming out so the world can see it. Right. But yet the people in the world, they can't see it. It's not given to, to them to understand. Okay. It will be a snare to them. Now, what's, remember I said to you before that when Israel was broken off, we were grafted in. We came in as ignorant, unlearned people about God. Correct? Mm -hmm. Ignorant, unlearned. We're barbarians. 
we are <laughs> in God's eye we're the uncivilized people we're the seven nations of top people illicit sex life gross wickedness and now Christianity gave Gentile nation a sense of rule of law by 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 law order law and order by Christianity quarantining where did quarantine come from where the, where the hygiene from medical profession comes from from the book of Leviticus where did they teach lawyers the first law to teach them is Moses law there's no law before Moses law you can turn to right so but we as Gentiles are are now dissociating ourselves from Judaistic teaching and go back to our ancestral teaching, paganism. Are you with me? And so, you go to paganism, we are we're fulfilled that God has given upon us, and the signs in the sky was not new because God said, therefore signs and wonders. What do you mean? He used it for that purpose. So, yes, they're going back to it. I don't think that many days left. The door's being closed. And I believe God has given this world over to reprobation. And Paul says to dishonor their own body among themselves. When they, when they mark it up, mutilate it, they're dishonoring their body. They think it looks cute, but they're being, you know, what used to be the jungle life is now normal life. What used to be the shock and awe is acceptable and norm. And so we're going to have to pay in this the base element of this world. So we're going back to it, yes. They, they don't know it, but they're doing it. We're seeing it. And <laughs> we're like a lot. Our souls are vexed. But we shouldn't sit about it. Any more question on this side? Yes, sir. As it relates to the interpretation of the Jews and so on, uh -huh. could it be used, could this interpretation be used to um, identify or guide your thought process as to what the weeks, what the time frame should be? For example, right the first section of the the first section, the you know, typically um your days would represent a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So you could probably use it as a guideline as to determine what the, the days are, what the time frames mean actually. Right now? No, in terms of the different dispensations, right? From yes. Genesis to Revelation, there are mm -hmm. different dispensations. So depending on the time that's used within the dispensation, it, could that be used as a guide to say, okay, this means a thousand years versus a literal day? Uh, let me see if I answer your question. Can using the uh, the standard that is set up tell us which one is being used? I think creation gives us the guide the guideline. The first week of creation gives us the tell us the whole story, what's goes on there. We see there's a creation day without the sun and the moon. They don't even exist. And yet we have a day defined. So you gotta you got a, a, a day defined without the, the, the galaxies. I understand that. The day of the galaxies. And then there's a day that's dependent on the sun and the moon. Right? And that day is for man. And then we see a day of how God deals with his people. He set that arbitrarily, right? 